Well, we now know that TCU found a very clever way to one-up the best of the Big Ten. Welcome into the channel. I am John Kurtz. Here on this channel, we talk college football, college basketball, and conference realignment, all from a Big 12 angle. Please consider subscribing if you have not, and click that bell so you know when it is that I'm going live. You can support the channel on Venmo at john kurtz Dash four. Uh, first of all, appreciate you guys for living with not having a live show on Sunday. Uh, had a funeral. Had to spend time with family over the last couple of days. So my apologies on missing that, but uh, I appreciate you guys uh, being cool about it. Here we have a story that I would have talked about uh, had we done a live show, and that is about the biggest story in college football, which of course is the Michigan sign stealing scandal right now, and how it relates to TCU and their big college football playoff win over Michigan last year. Uh, from Ross Dellinger of Yahoo Sports, TCU coaches, having gained information on Michigan's elaborate sign-stealing scheme, changed many of their play call signals before kickoff. However, head coach Sonny Dykes and the Horn Frog staff had grander ideas than just changing signals. They pulled a fast one on the Wolverines. Before we even get into all of the details of this, I just love it. Regardless of your opinion on the Michigan thing, how big of a deal it actually is, I love that we get to remind everybody here with a news cycle that TCU did win a game in the college football playoff against mighty Michigan last year. Uh, it was quite the win and uh, looks even better now that we know about everything that Michigan was doing with, uh, of course, if you have not heard, sending an assistant coach to buy tickets for others to go to other games of teams, which is not allowed, and uh, film their sidelines. Anyway, TCU mixed in new play call signals with old ones, using what one TCU staff member described as dummy signals in an effort to trick the UM staff. The dummy signals were old play calls that had since been changed. Players were, tol were told to ignore the dummy signals and run the original play as called with the new signals. Quote, sometimes we froze a play before the snap, said one TCU coach. We'd call a play and then we'd signal in another play with an old signal, but we told the players to run the original play. So this is not just changing the signs. They were still using some of the old signs, throwing them both in. And I've heard of this plenty of times before of teams doing this, having a real signal, a dummy signal. They had both of them out there to try and confuse this whole operation that Michigan had running. And the other thing about this that I think is, is important to point out, is at least as it relates to how culpable Michigan is in all of this and how much of a competitive advantage really it was, this is a lot easier to do if you're TCU when you have multiple weeks to prepare as they did for that game against Michigan. They had a lot of time to prepare, put things in like this, make sure that the kids have everything down and know what it is that they're doing. That is much harder to do in a condensed one-week output when you're getting ready to play Michigan that week. A lot harder to be doing something like that, it, certainly to put in something as elaborate as this and make sure that everybody knows what's going on. Because if you're trying to get 11 guys, 11 college kids at one time to be on the same page with something and you're throwing in dummy signals and having to do all this extra work, that can be a lot for just one week. But TCU had plenty of time to get that all figured out. Uh, a little bit on the scheme here. The breadth of the scheme appears to be massive. Stallions, who is the assistant coach, purchased tickets to games at 12 uh, of 13 Big Ten schools for a total of 30 games. At least one of the schools produced in-stadium surveillance video of someone recording the sideline and the seats Stallions booked. He also purchased tickets to games involving, involving college football playoff contenders like Tennessee, Georgia, Oregon, Alabama, and Clemson, as well as the last two SEC championship games. At TCU, the school found no evidence that Stallions purchased a ticket to a home game last season, but there were ample opportunities to record the Horned Frogs in road games or in the Big 12 championship game against Kansas State. It's an interesting thought. Did, uh, did Stallions have somebody sitting in a seat across from the TCU bench at the Big 12 championship game, uh, I suppose we may never know, but that's that's quite the thought. Not long after the college football playoff unveiled the 2022 semifinal matchups, Georgia against Ohio State and TCU v. Michigan, the Horned Frog staff began receiving phone calls from coaches across the country about what was a well-known fact in the Big Ten coaching community that Michigan had an elaborate sign-stealing system. Many of those on the TCU staff were unaware before the calls. Coaches from several Big Ten schools, including Ohio State, informed TCU coaches of the scheme. Quote, literally everybody we talked to knew, said one TCU coach. They'd say, just so you know, they steal your signals and they're going to have everything, so you better change them. One coach told the staff that Michigan has the most elaborate sign stealing in the history of the world. <laughs> uh, how about that? The most elaborate sign stealing in the history of the world. Uh, TCU changed some of the signals. More interesting, though, is that they purposely used the old signals to trick the Wolverines. 
a move not so surprising given the savvy nature of their head coach. Dykes is a protege of Mike Leach, a coach known for poking fun at those who steal signals. In one game while coach at Washington State, Leach learned that the coach of his next team's opponent, Arizona State's Todd Graham, was notorious for stealing signs. During the game against ASU, Leach aggressively flashed signals toward Graham in a hilarious moment that's made the rounds on social media over the last few days. And I would highly encourage that you go find that clip if you have not seen it yet. It is very funny. Uh, rest in peace to the Pirate. It was, it was excellent. Uh, Dykes and staff crafted a game plan that, at least in part, used the dummy signals to fool Coach Harbaugh and Signaler Stallions. TCU scored first-half touchdowns on drives of 10 plays for 83 yards and 12 plays for 76 yards. The Frogs scored more points on Michigan than any team that season, 51, eclipsing the next highest scoring opponent by 24 points. Now, it should be pointed out, TCU's defense was scoring too and uh, and contributed to that. So I would say that for two reasons. One, we're talking about all the points that they scored on Michigan. It was not all because of their duped sign-stealing operation. Some of it was because their defense was putting up points as well. Uh, but also, you can't just say that this whole thing was all based on TCU figuring out the scheme and countering the scheme. It was also based on them just playing a very good football game that day. Quote, the guy was wrong a couple times, one TCU staff member said. We rewatched the TV version of the game. You can see him standing next to the defensive coordinator. He tells something to the coordinator and he points in the air to mean pass. You can see the play sheet he's holding with our hand signs on them. TCU did a variety of measures to avoid the issue behind or beyond changing some signs. Staff purposely signaled in plays late as to not leave enough time for Stallions to relay the signal to coaches. Quote, there are some times in the game that they still got us, a TCU staff member said, especially on short yardage. I mean, that seems pretty emblematic of what the uh, real accurate take would be on all of this. going to be a competitive advantage, but not all of the time. You'll still find ways to work it in and get it right, but you can do things to try and combat it as TCU clearly did to the best of their ability. So shout out to Sonny Dykes, man, getting pretty clever here. And I, again, would just love to reiterate that I, I very much enjoy that this is being reminded to everybody. Everybody is getting a nice reminder. It's a weird way to say it. Everyone's getting a nice reminder that TCU beat Michigan in the playoff last year. Because what has been the prevailing memory for everybody and all anybody's talked about, it's 65-7, to 7, right? The, the loss to Georgia, the national championship game, and how it went down and how it happened is a lot different. Let's remind them that Michigan, big, bad, mighty Michigan, that people think is the best team in the country perhaps right now, even though they haven't played anybody, they did go down at the hands of TCU. And they got thwarted at their own game. They got a little taste of their own medicine. TCU throwing in some dummy signals to get them got. Uh, there is a bit of an update on the Michigan story from today, by the way. Uh, Coach Jim Harbaugh responded to a report that the university had rescinded a contract extension offer in recent weeks. He says that's not accurate. Uh, Harbaugh's in the second year of a five-year deal with the Wolverines. Michigan Athletic Director Ward Manuel told ESPN's Adam Rittenberg on October 10th that the school had hoped to have an extension for the head coach soon. That process was put on hold a week later after Michigan learned that the NCAA was investigating an alleged years-long cheating scheme. The Wall Street Journal reported Sunday night that Michigan had rescinded its offer to Harbaugh. He said, quote, I wouldn't say that's accurate, no. Uh, but a source told ESPN's Tom Van Heron that Harbaugh was instructed not to sign the contract offer yet. University spokesman published a statement Sunday night stating that the school does not comment on employment contracts until they are completely and fully executed. Harbaugh declined to answer a question about the current nature of his relationship with Manuel and the other university leaders. Quote, I can talk about the football game this Saturday, he said. I can talk about the vibes in that preparation and where that stands today. It doesn't seem like you're interested in that. That's all I can talk about. So there's your update. There's your update on what's going on with Michigan. But most importantly, let's have a little laugh at the expense of the Wolverines and do it on behalf of Sonny Dykes and the Frogs and the New Look Big 12 for picking up that college football playoff win last year against the Wolverines. It looks even more impressive against the backdrop of this elaborate scheme. Uh, that Michigan had going on. Appreciate you guys. Once again, my apologies for missing the show on Sunday. Should be back at it with a live show on Wednesday. Looking forward to talking to all of you guys then about this Big 12 race and how it's shaping up to be one hell of a November. Look at the new Big 12 coming back. The, the hateful eight getting their bleep together. Uh, it'll be fun. So please subscribe, click the bell so you know when it is to join 
that one coming up on Wednesday night. Also, if you like the video, I would much appreciate it. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section, whether you love me, hate me, agree, disagree, all of that stuff is great. And you can support the channel again on Venmo at john kurtz 4 Appreciate all of you guys. Thank you for being here. Take care, and I will talk to you soon.